Hey guys, so today in this video, what I wanted to do is an ultimate networking and optimization guide. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is that there tends to be a lot of different information online about ways to improve your internet, but they tend to not necessarily provide any sourcing of that information. And so I wanted to only provide tweaks for you guys that were provided by either Microsoft, Nvidia, Intel, or some other third party that is generally trusted within the industry for all of the different information. Because I didn't want to just give you guys registry edits that um, either wouldn't apply to your specific use cases or didn't have some sort of validity behind them. So with that being said, I'll provide all of the different links in the description for where I'm referencing this stuff. So that way you guys can check it out for yourself because some of it also has a few other registry tweaks that you can apply for yourself as well, but I'm only going to be covering the main ones that I found to be the most beneficial for the majority of people, but feel free to check it out for yourself. Anyway, going into the registry, the first tweak that we're going to do is it's called Fast Send Datagram Threshold, and this one is provided by NVIDIA, and the datagram threshold essentially is how much information you can stuff into a single packet of information, and we're going to be sending thousands of these packets, so it's obviously important that we have the most optimal value for this. And so, essentially, how much information can we stuff into that single packet? And the value is around 65-ish thousand of the recommended value, and so we're going to set it to 64,000, and that's going to give us the maximum datagram threshold that we're going to want to use. The next tweak is it's going to be related to RSS or receive side scaling. And what receive side scaling does is it's essentially a way of deferring interrupts from a specific amount of affinities on your cores. And what that means is that whenever you have a lot of different interrupts, what it's going to try to do is spread it out across a couple of different cores on your system. And that is beneficial because if you have too little cores and you have too many interrupts, you can get a latency penalty. So deferring it to a couple of different cores tends to be the best course of action. And so the recommended value is four. Definitely don't set it below four or two, because if you do, you'll start to notice that your latency will take a pretty hard hit. And so what you're going to do is go and create a registry key known as max num RSS CPU spelled exactly like this and then just set it to four. That's the one that most people recommend and that's the one that tends to give most people the best value because anything more is probably going to be redundant or unnecessary for you guys just because that's very unlikely that you're gonna be able to saturate that many cores on your system. So the next way we can actually make sure that this actually applies as well is just running this specific command right here, net sh int tcp set global rss equals enabled, then just hit enter for that. And then the next tweak, the next tweak is going to be related to specifically a problem that occurred with my last video where I recommended people apply interrupt affinities for their different specific actual ethernet drivers. And the problem was is that if you go into device manager and you have a specific ethernet device or Wi-Fi device that is, let's say controlled by the motherboard rather than by an external adapter that you may have, the problem is, is that if you go into here and you try to do it through the interrupt affinity policy configuration tool, it doesn't really seem to apply. And you can actually validate this by just going into something like latency mon, going to the CPU cores, and then just running the test and seeing the actual interrupt amounts on the core that you're using. If you run a speed test, you'll notice it will get into the many hundreds of thousands very, very quickly. So it's an easy test to run. So the way that we get around this problem is what we're going to do is we're going to go into this specific registry tree and we're going to go and then just copy right here and copy that and then paste it here. What we're going to do is we're going to want to create a CPU registry value of RSS base CPU. And then what we're going to want to do is set this to the core that we want to use. So for example, number nine is going to use core nine, not core eight. So there's a bit of a fudge factor with this one, but the way that we can validate this, so now that we have RSS based CPU, we can go and obviously open up latency mon, and then we're going to open up a speed test. I just got to open up in the panel to the left here, but we're just going to go ahead and run a speed test, and then we're going to run latency mon, and then we're just going to look for it. So we see a few interrupts on core nine, but the way that we can actually really make sure that it's not interrupting on core zero is if we run that speed test right now, you'll notice that our actual interrupt amounts skyrocket, but you can also notice that it's not applying on core zero anymore. So that's the easiest tweak for you guys to double check and verify. 
Now, the next tweak that we're going to do is we're going to be talking about the buffer sizes. And there tends to be, again, a lot of different conflicting information about this one, but I did notice that manipulating it and playing around with it does tend to give a little bit of a performance impact. So I recommend that you guys check this one out for yourself, but most people recommend setting it to the highest amount. Even Intel does recommend setting it to the highest amount for enhanced performance. And it essentially is the maximum amount that you can copy the data into for the memory. So that's essentially the buffer itself. And so it is recommended to set it to the max amount, but if you have it too high set, then if you have regularly packets that are not actually saturating the full buffer size, then you can sort of get a latency penalty. So I do recommend checking this one out and try and mess around with the values to see if it improves your latency or your networking bandwidth because too high can be causing latency issues when you don't saturate that buffer size fully and too low can cause the same issues where you're obviously not having buffers big enough for that. So that's the main thing. My default is 1024. And then obviously for this one, it's going to be 1024 as well. On another driver, that's the same driver as this one. The actual defaults are 512 for the receive and 128 for the transmit. So there tends to be, even within the drivers themselves, uh, conflicting information about which is the best value to set. So I only use the Intel Pro Set Adapter because it's obviously an Intel Ethernet controller. So that's just what I use. The next thing that we're going to be doing is changing the dynamic port values. And what the dynamic port value is essentially is it's a way of checking the actual index values of how many ports are going to be needed. So if you have a specific application that needs to access a lot of different ports, well, it needs to access quite a lot of them as an index. So there are 1,023 referenced very commonly used um, indexes or actual ports that are used. So if you try to set it below 1,023 or 1,024, you won't be able to because those are actually reserved by the system for other things. And so the way that we can check this is if we go and run this command, we can actually see specifically for UDP and TCP, and then we can see our starting port and then the number of ports. And so the maximum value is around 65,000, and then the starting port has to be around 1,025 as well. So if we go ahead and run these two specific commands, we can go ahead and enter that. That'll hit OK, hit OK. And then we just rerun this command right here. And then that should tell us again if we have the correct port ranges for everything involved. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is the actual timer resolution, because there is actually apparently a timer resolution for your internet, apparently. So we're going to go ahead and use Policy Plus. Now, why are we using Policy Plus? The main reason behind that is because Policy Plus actually has a specific feature where if you try to actually use the group policy editor that you download online that is commonly used by a lot of people, the group policy editor doesn't actually apply. And you can verify this by going into your own group policy editor. And then you can go and click, for example, something like hide and disable all items on the desktop and then hit enabled, hit apply, hit OK, and then go ahead and save it and then restart your system. You'll notice that all of your desktop items will still be on the desktop. And so that's how you can check if your group policy editor actually works is by doing a simple tweak like this on the desktop to make sure. Policy Plus actually does apply those tweaks. So that's how you can actually use this to override the group policy, I guess I would call it a bug, maybe a malfunction and that will actually help you guys. So if we go into the networking and then we go into the QoS packet scheduler, we're going to want to set the timer resolution registry or the group policy edit. We're gonna hit enabled. By default, it's set to 10, but we're gonna set it to one. Hit apply, hit okay, and then limit reservable bandwidth. The internet will actually try to limit the amount of bandwidth that you have if it has to execute a really high priority background task, which can sometimes be something as simple as a Windows update or something more complex. So I would recommend setting this value to zero, hitting apply, hit okay, and then go into the top left file and then save policies, restart, and you guys should be good to go there. Now, the next tweak that we're going to be looking at is something related to the networking throttling index and this one, again, is a directly related to this value inside of here, but there is another value that is also inside of here that we want to look at, and that's the system responsiveness value. And they recommend setting this value to zero because it will automatically only use 10% rather than 20% of your system's reserved actual you know, CPU cycles. So by default, it's 20, meaning it's going to use 20% of your CPU's actual resources. 
And that's obviously a lot to for some people because that can be in an entire core, can be completely taken away at any one given point. So set this to zero. And then most people recommend the networking throttling index of eight Fs. And so that's the best values that most people recommend. And then the next tweak that we're going to be looking at is something known as threaded DPCs. And I'm going to pull up some documentation for this one because it's very difficult to explain. But threaded DPCs are, is a DPC that, system executes at IRQL passive level. And threaded DPCs are enabled by default, but you can disable them by going to this registry key right here and then changing it to zero. An ordinary DPC preempts the execution of all threads and cannot be preempted by a thread or another DPC. If the system has a large number of ordinary DPCs queued, or if one of those DPCs runs for a long time, every thread will remain paused for an arbitrary long time. Thus, each ordinary DPC increases system latency. But, and another argument, Microsoft publishes another documentation value, and they recommend for setting up a device for real-time performance, they actually recommend disabling threaded DPCs. So it just depends on if you're wanting the maximum real-time optimal values. So you're going to go into the actual kernel right here for this registry key, and then set thread DPC enabled to zero. And then that should get you guys fixed with that issue. Now, the final thing is we're just going to quickly go through a couple of these other different values here because most of them you actually are probably better off having just keeping at the default values, but there's only a couple of them that I found actually were better off having disabled or changing. And the first one is going to be flow control. Now, flow control at first sounds like it would be something that would be bad to have enabled because it would limit the actual like a limit they would actually limit the potential of the network, but flow control helps with framing of traffic. And so if you have, for example, a couple of packets that need to be sent as a group, if you have to fragment those packets, that's really bad. So keeping flow control enabled actually is beneficial. And most people actually online recommend disabling this. So don't actually do that because again, it helps with flow control of the frames. So that's really important, especially if you've looked up videos about that before. Interrupt moderation rate, that was something I actually showed in a previous video just barely that it actually is more beneficial to have it disabled. And a couple of people in the comments even showed the same thing where sometimes it's the opposite for them. Sometimes having interrupt moderation on actually helps their bandwidth or their latency or having it disabled does the opposite. So it just depends on how good your networking is or you know if you're having a different network setup. The next is Jumbo Packet, and this one has a lot of conflicting information online, but I just recommend keeping it disabled because it mostly is used for when there's situations that are larger than the um, maximum transmit unit or the MTU size, but again, that's more determined by your router itself, so I don't necessarily find any values that are best to keep for this one. And then for all of the offloads, so the large send, the checksums, all of that stuff, don't disable a single one of those because every single time you do, you can run a network test and your latency and your bandwidth will get slammed. Because actually funny enough, if you actually look at it here, Intel says this, because the adapter hardware is able to complete data segmentation much faster than the operating system software. So it's better to keep this on enabled because even Intel says that this is faster than doing it just by software artificially. Log link state events, disable that. That's just eventually putting in the event viewer, which is just gonna obviously take up random resources. And then packet priority in VLAN, just set it to packet priority. And then selective suspend, disable that. And then speed and duplex, set that to the maximum. And then for all the other stuff, like the wake first stuff, you can just keep at the regular values because they don't really seem to do a whole lot. But for all of that, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Again, I'll be linking all this stuff in the description as well, so you guys can check it out for yourself. But Thank you guys for watching. My name is Savaterix, and I'm out.